Hey guys, this is Sam, and today we're talking about what is new in iOS 10.1. So before being released today, iOS 10.1 was in beta for quite a few weeks and the headlining feature of this update unfortunately isn't even available for most of you with an iPhone. It's available exclusively for the iPhone 7 Plus because it enables this new portrait mode beta feature which allows you to take photos like you're seeing on screen right now. Quite honestly, if I didn't tell you guys that these were taken with an iPhone, you probably would have assumed like, oh, these were taken with a high-end camera, like look at that depth of field, usually you need a fancy like DSLR camera, very expensive to take these photos, but somehow Apple's managed to make it work with the dual camera system in the iPhone 7 Plus, and seriously, it looks amazing. Once again, that's only available for the iPhone 7 Plus, which kind of sucks, but there's also quite a few changes and improvements on iOS 10.1 that all of us can enjoy, which we're going to head into and start talking about right now. So, what is new? Starting off with camera and photos, we have that camera portrait mode feature. People's names in the photo app are saved via iCloud backups now. It improves the display of wide color gamut photos in the grid views of the photos app, fixes an issue where the camera app would show a blurred or flashing screen for some users, and finally for camera and photos, iOS 10.1 fixes an issue that caused photos to quit for some users when turning on iCloud Photo Library. Now if you're a Maps user and you live in Tokyo, Osaka, or Nagoya, you're gonna love iOS 10.1 because it enables transit support for every major train, subway, ferry, national bus line, and even local bus systems for those locations, which is great if you live there. There's also sign-based transit navigation, including layouts of all underground structures and walkways that connect large transit stations. I'm pretty sure that is worldwide or every place that transit is supported, not just in those three locations before. And finally, transit fare comparison is now enabled when viewing alternate transit routes. In the Messages app are where some of my favorite changes happen. You have a new option to finally replay bubble or full screen effects. Can't tell you how many times someone sent me a really cool iMessage effect. I would see the very end of it or maybe none of it at all and then I wouldn't be able to watch it again and it was too awkward to ask like hey can you resend that really cool message effect? So now you can just hit replay when somebody sends something which is super cool and you can also play messages effects even with reduced motion enabled which is very nice as well. Also in the messages app iOS 10.1 fixes an issue that could lead to contact names appearing incorrectly in messages It addresses an issue where the messages could open to a white screen addresses an issue that could prevent the report junk option from displaying with unknown senders, and fixes an issue where videos captured and sent in the Messages app could be missing audio. Now in addition to all that, we got some changes for the Apple Watch as well, at least on the iPhone side of things. iOS 10.1 adds distance and average pace to work out summaries in the Activity app for, old, for outdoor wheelchair run pace and outdoor wheelchair walk pace, fixes issues that may have prevented Apple Music, or Music Playlist rather, from syncing to Apple Watch. It addresses an issue that was preventing invitations and data to appear in activity sharing, fixes an issue that was allowing activity sharing to update over cellular, even though it was manually disabled, and also resolves an issue that was causing some third-party apps to crash while inputting text. There are some other changes and improvements as well, I won't go through all of these, I'll just kind of flash them on the screen for you guys to read right now. And if you want to see the full change log, of course, what I just went over is available on my website in the top right hand corner of the screen. But overall guys, iOS 10.1 is a very nice upgrade. Now it's nowhere near the scale of iOS 10 or even a pretty big point update like iOS 9.3 that we saw earlier this year in March. But overall, it's a very good start to improving iOS 10. I think iOS 10 is awesome already. Now we have the option to replay some things in the Messages app. And all in all, it just makes our iPhone a little bit better than before. So there's no reason you shouldn't update. I would highly recommend updating, in fact. And let me know what you guys think about iOS 10.1 by leaving a comment down below. Have you updated? Do you like it? What features will you be taking advantage of? If you enjoyed this, hit like down below. And of course, subscribe for all of the latest iOS news. I've been Sam. I hope you guys are doing fantastic. And I will talk to you later.